Yo, what is up you guys? Um, I just got this brand new tablet a few days ago, this is a graphics tablet, the Heon Inspiroi H610 Pro V2. Um, I think it was released 2018, about two, uh, two years ago, considering, well, 721, brand new year. Um, and I got it for about 50 US dollars from Amazon. It's, it was really cheap. I, this is what I adore about Hyun. it's also my first Hyun tablet anyway, um, is that they have quality products for such an affordable, affordable price, right? Uh, let's just get right into it, so I'm gonna open it up. Okay, the struggle, wow. So in here we are greeted with the thank you card from Hyun. pretty nice and fancy. Uh, thank you for choosing Heon, blah blah blah, you got some customer service as well as some QR codes if you ever want to use those. And then we have the tablet itself, wrapped in some plastic, I like the boxing of this. Uh, and inside the box, you'll find this little thingy here, which at first I thought was some sort of installation CD, but apparently it's just... It just tells you where you can download the drivers or the manual for the tablet at hyun.com slash download. And we'll get into that part later and I'll show you guys how to set up the drivers as well as the um, program it comes with. Next up, we have these mini USB as well as uh, Type-C ports. So from USB, which is the cable itself for the tablet, to these, if you want to connect it to your mobile device, and so far it only supports Android, so iOS, not yet, but if you have an Android mobile device, be it a phone, a smartphone, or a tablet, this will work. I've already tested it out. Ah, this is amazing. <laughs> um, then we have this little packet in here, just a little manual, shows you how to use the tablet in a few different languages. Pretty neat if you want to look at it. This also shows you, I think, how to use, how to connect the tablet to your phone. Pretty cool. And yeah, that's it on here. Now over to the side, we have the cable itself that will connect um, the USB to the computer and the whatever port this is, the Huon. Oh, it's... Looks like I'm in USB, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> to the tablet itself. Got the pen holder. Really nifty. Pen holder with like eight different nibs when you open it like this. Really cool. So, if you, you probably won't run out of these unless you draw like 24 7. <laughs> and finally, the most important part after the tablet itself is the pen. So to me, what really matters the most is the pen sensitivity, as well as just how it feels, the texture on the tablet. Is it is it rough? Is it smooth? Does it lag and all of that? And we'll be going to detail later when I exemplify it. So putting the box aside, I would just go through I'll go over some dimensions, as well as any other specifications. So you just want to open this up. It should already be opened. And there you have it. The tablet. It's really pretty. It's huge. <laughs> well, I mean, not huge, but it's, it's, it's pretty decently big. This would take up... If you had a small desk, this would take up quite a large portion. Um, so let's get on with the dimensions. We have a 35.3 by 24.5 by 1 centimeter tablet. So like the length, the width, and the thickness um, in inches. If you're if you rather go with that, sixteen point five by nine point eight by one point six inches, right? And the sensitive area itself, so the place where you uh, work on, is twenty five point four by fifteen point nine centimeters, and uh, in inches, that's ten inches by six point twenty five. So th yeah, this is where you work on, and this is just the remaining space. If you want to put your hand, if you want to. I don't know, <laughs> you got the buttons over here. And as for the buttons, it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different personalized hard key buttons. And then you have these soft keys, which I'm not exactly sure how to use yet. I think you just press lightly on them because it doesn't give any kind of 
response or rebound physically, but I guess it's just touch sensitive, right? And as I said, these are customizable, which will be which we'll be looking at, at the settings in the program later on. Um, the sensitivity settings for the pen, the sensitivity level, sorry, that's at 8192, which is really high. So if you just slightly put the pen against the tablet, it will recognize the, um, it, it will detect it. It will detect it. <laughs> English. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to make some comparisons real quick. So I'm going to use my old tablet as a comparison, the Wacom Bamboo CTH670, as well as the Wacom Intuos Pro, because I knew a few, I know a few of my friends who also own that. Um, yeah, let me just show you guys mine real quick. It recently said adios. Uh, well, the tablet itself, sorry, the tablet itself works. So, oh my god, it's really old. I've had this, I've had this for the past six years, I think. And it, I finally decided it was time to change because the pen went through every world war and back. It stopped working completely. Tried fixing it numerous times, worked fine until like... Two or three months ago, stopped working, boom, no digital art, <laughs> at least not with a tablet. So as you can see, the Huon is a bit bigger. Let's say about, about one inch or so, right? Uh, so like two, two and a half centimeters. And um, the pen was like all one eighth of the um, sensitivity of the Huon pen at 1,000, 1,024. As for the Intuos, uh, Intuos Pro, that one has the same sensitivity levels as um, the Huion tablet. Now, the next comparison would be the pen battery itself. So this is non-rechargeable. Like, you don't have to charge the batteries of the pens, which I find extremely convenient because you don't have to worry about it suddenly um, running out of battery while you're drawing. So the Intuos Pro does have a rechargeable battery, but my old CTH um, 670 did not need batteries either. So that's pretty cool. And now for a few price comparisons, as I said, I copped this one off for $50. It was on sale, I think, but it's usually around that price, really, on Amazon. And um, the Intuos, the Wacom Intuos Pro, $400. dollars so you can see that huge price jump for about the same quality. As for mine, I got it, as I said, six years ago for around $200 where I live. So I'm just converting the currency, just using the general global currency, US dollars, sorry about that. <laughs> I'll provide links in the descri descriptions for um, both the Huion, the one I have, and the Intuos Pro. The, my, my, my tablet, my old one, barely sells anymore. That's why I couldn't find a replacement pen for it. It just, it doesn't exist. Okay. So now that we have, wait, I'm going to even open this. <laughs> here you go. Here is the pen. Really nice. It's, it's a bit big, but it fits my hand rather well. Um, to compare about, this one is a bit taller, but the thickness is around the same. And it's all round except for this little part here, I guess, so you can like set it down without it rolling over. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, of course, you can just put it on the pen holder like so. It also has two customizable buttons here, so like I could use it for right click or eraser. But personally, I don't ever even use these. I just like using the keyboard or from now on, I'm going to get try to get used to using the buttons. Just to test it out real quick, extremely smooth. This feels, this feels fantastic, honestly. I'm probably going to have to get used to it, but honestly, it feels just about the same, it's the same texture as my old Wacom one. Really good, really good. The only thing I might have to get used to really is the sensitivity levels because jumping from 1024 to 8192, that's like eight times. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a hassle. Not really, honestly. It's it just like a matter of how hard you press. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's just get right into installing the drivers and testing it out on a few drawing programs. And at the end, I'll try to do some sort of speed paints. I suck at those. I just, 
I get nervous recording myself drawing even while streaming art. I just see, I oh my god, what am I doing? Why am I taking so long? Anyway, I'll see you guys there. Alright, so what we want to do is go to huyan.com and then on to support and download. This is a page where we're going to download our drivers for our computer to be able to properly recognize the tablet as well as detect the pen sensitivity as well as give you um, the application it comes with, all of that. So you want to look for your product model, in this case the H610 V2, Pro V2, sorry, which should be around here somewhere, there it is. And then you select your OS, I have Windows 10, it doesn't matter, Windows, and you want to select driver, unless you want the manual as well. Submit. And there you have it, you want to download the latest one, so 2020-0710, and once you do download it, it's going to be a zip file, so you're going to need either WinRAR or WinZip, 7-zip. And you just extract this thing over here. And there you have it. I've already done the installation, but it's a very simple process. All you have to do is click on next. And if you want to um, change the install location, you do that. But yeah, once that's done, you just want to open up the application and install here on tablet. And you're going to be greeted with the, um, the about page. So what you want to do first is click on this, that way you can actually modify the settings. So you just allow it. Once you do, it's going to quickly restart and now you can actually make changes. So in here it says device disconnected. Uh, that's because I haven't connected my tablet to my computer yet. And once you do, it should immediately connect and um, recognize it. You have device connected over here. It's setting. We're setting it up. Um, that's fine. So what you want to customize first depends on you. For example, if you want to change the um, the press keys, for example, in here it was originally at Control Alt Z, which is the undo function on Photoshop. I'm guessing. Um, but since I use Paint Tool Side the most, I just change that to Control Z instead. And you can quickly do that by click on clicking on here, and then just setting it to whatever you want to be. So it was at Control Alt Z. I just uncheck this and kept it at Control Z. And of course, you can just um, do it however you like. Whoops. <laughs> Control Z. You can change this for all the other buttons. So this is like the for example, your favorite brush tool, the eraser, zoom in, out. This is the brackets for like increasing and decreasing the size, and this is to move, so using the space bar. Over here, if you want to use the soft keys, you'd have to enable them first. So let's look at that real quick. So all of these are just, yeah, it's just different ones. I'm probably going to set them up later uh, for my own brushes. Alright, so next up is the pen itself, if you want to customize the buttons. In here you have the mouse right or E. I barely use the button, so I honestly couldn't care less. This is the pressure sensitivity adjustments. You can play around with it if you like, but basically it's just it's a curve that modifies how strong or how um, soft you have to press on your pen for it to detect any kinds of levels. So for now, it's just linear. It'll start around here and then go up until here, but you can have it to start very lightly or also uh, at a higher level. Let's test that out real quick. I'm just gonna take out the pen. As you can see, here it is. I'm using the pen right now. And in here, you can just test however you'd like. So there it is. I'm pressing as lightly as I can and it's still detecting it. Then as hard as I can, at maximum. Light bare minimum. Let's let's try to change that real quick in here. So if I were to move this right at the bottom. Let's see how much... Ooh, okay. So I'm pressing lightly, but... Yeah, as you can see, it requires more force. But if you were to change it like this instead, it would need less force. See? Bam. So this just depends entirely on you if you are not comfortable with um, that many levels. For me, I think I'll just keep it at linear. That way it's equally balanced. Matter of habit, really. In here you can change if you want to enable Windows Ink or mouse mode or game mode. I'm not sure what these two really do. I'm assuming for like 
say you want to play Osu, a game I used to frequently play, I would just turn this on and I guess it would be a better fit to play. And yeah. Okay, now we move on to the work area. So this is if you want to modify where your pen touches and how will it um how will it be detected on your screen. So if you were to um rescale it and move it and then click on apply, you will immediately see the changes. See how faster it moves towards the left or towards the right? That's because it using it's using less of a work area. Moving it even smaller. Let's say you just wanted it over here. Even better. Wait, no. Click on apply. You can see how fast it goes across the screen because of the work area. Now I prefer using all of the all of the area. I'll just I'll just try to get used to it as much as I can. Again, it's a matter of habit. You just keep on drawing. So if you want to if you want to keep it that way, you can. If you want to modify it a bit to match your old tablet, you can do that or just play around with it as much as you want. In here, it's your d display. So if you wanted to also work on your let's say you have a dual or a triple, I don't know how many monitors you guys have set up, you can change which display you wanted to work on. I just have one, so I'm going to keep it that way. And if you're left-handed, you can just flip it 180 degrees that way it'll um, recognize your stuff as left-handed instead so as you can see the buttons will obviously change too and so will the soft keys but I'm right-handed so I'll keep it that way you could also have it at 90 degrees so vertically if you'd rather use it like a say a paper in a vertical mode but yeah just it just customizable however you want I really like how it allows you to customize it this much also the application itself perfect okay so I'm just going to apply everything. Okay, and I let's test this out on a um, on a few software. Just a very quick thing I wanted to mention. I actually misunderstood. There is no touch touch functionality on this tablet, so you can't use your fingers. Um, besides, what will you use your fingers for <laughs> on a graphics tablet? So that doesn't really apply to me. But just wanted to let you guys know that. And I figured that out because no matter what I did to get these things to work with my finger, I realized that no, they need to be pressed with a pen. So in order for them to work, you have to press on them with your pen. I don't know why I thought I could just use them like other buttons, but yeah. So for example, I, do, I have D assigned to erase the whole layer. I'm, I have it set as 4 on here, so I would press it with the pen itself and yeah. Alright, so I'm going to be recording on both my computer and in real life. That way I can show you guys how the um, the pen moves on the tablet as well as how it moves on um, the computer. So the only flaw I've actually noticed so far is that <laughs> the tablet takes in sweat marks and hand marks pretty easily. And considering how sweaty my hands get when I draw, that might be a problem mainly to the eye like how appealing it looks, though just a few wipes with the tissue should do the trick. Alright, let's just get right into it. So this is Paint Tool Sai. I'm going to be testing it out on Sai Photoshop and Photoshop and MS Paint, because I don't have Clip Studio nor any other programs, but it should work just the same. So right here I'm just using a regular brush, regular color, let's try it out. So over here, I'm just going really lightly and then pressing a bit harder. You can see this is pretty, this is really pretty. I like this. It's really good. The detection is just perfect. It feels very realistic too. Uh, let me just switch the size to pretty good, pretty good. And this also depends on your brush setting. So let's say on site, if you have this at hard, it'll take harder uh, harder force to actually reckon, uh, detect the size. But if you have it at soft, then it wouldn't take too much. I just keep it at 100. 100. 100! <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I'm just going to test out a few other brushes I use. This is my line art brush. Fantastic. Very good. <laughs> this is just some weird brushes I have. Blending. What even is this? 
please. I don't even know my own brushes. It's okay. And this is chalk, I guess. <laughs> Whatever this is. If you guys want, I can um, put the link to both Sai and Sai2 um, in the description. Um, with like either extra brushes or, uh, and extra textures. And yeah. So let's just try this out on Photoshop too. Here I have it open, just using a uh, kind of cool brush I downloaded. Let's see. Ooh, the print pressure in here is fantastic. I just want to test out, as you can see, that was a whole stroke. With my old tablet, if I did that, it would think it's like two different strokes. Fantastic, this is really good. So again, it depends on the brush you're using too. But this is quite nice. So this is very light. Let me see if I can maybe use something else. Ooh, the pen pressure is just... What? I thought that would be like two different strokes. Okay. This is cool. This is cool. Oops. Uh, let's see anything else I have on here. Wet media brushes. When did I even download this? What the? Oh, this might be a blending brush. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see that. I see that. Sure. That's alright. That's alright. Okay, so this. Is, let me just use a different color. Pretty good. Pretty good. So, I don't use Photoshop as much, so I look like a noob using this right now. I only use it for... Okay, another blending brush. Cool. I only use it for, um, what was I saying? Effects or rendering. But, yeah. So, that's how it works on here. I'm using the buttons. They also work great. It's the eraser. Nice. I'm guessing, yeah, brush tool. This is zooming in. Works nice. Increasing the brush size. Oh, this, is, this feels really nice to the touch. And... Wait, let me just... Cool. Moves perfectly. Let me just try that on, say. Nice. Interesting. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I'm overall really satisfied with this drawing tablet for, like, the price I paid. Is incredible. It has so many more features than my old Wacom CJ670 for, like, what, like, quarter of the price? It's really good. All right, and the final test is on MS Paint. So let's just check this out for any of you guys that enjoy, still enjoy using MS Paint. And it works like a charm. Obviously, MS Paint does not have pen pressure, but it still works very smoothly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was one of them that had, that I discovered had um, pen pressure. Oh, there we go. So it does work with some of these brushes, although not all of them, of, of course. Though the the um, the tool I use the most really is the curve tool, since I use MS Paint only with the mouse, and the pencil tool, which also doesn't have pen pressure. That's it. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys how this works on the phone. So what you want to do is you take your main cable, the one from your tablet, the USB one, and you plug it into the port. Uh, that you the converter that you want to so for example I have a micro USB port I'm going to use the micro USB converter while the other one there's the type C one if you use that one instead um, as soon as you plug it in it should automatically detect it and over here I have uh, Ibis paint open and I'm pretty sure it should work with like Midibang or Krita or perhaps even I don't know sketchbook well procreate is not on Android and so far it's only Android compatible. So let's just check this out real quick. I have the pen over here. And boom. My cursor appears on my phone. Other smartphones, perhaps the cursor might not show up. But for me, mine does. So that's really perfect. Um, and as you can see over here, it only goes for a specific area. So obviously, you can't use the whole thing. It just... It makes it more practical for the screen size, so I'm just going to try drawing something real quick. Okay, this brush does not have... One sec. Alright. 
Oh, it does have pen pressure, okay. As you can see, it detects pen pressure just fine. The same as on my computer and the same as on the phone. This is really good if you don't have a if you don't have a device a computer or a laptop, then it should also work on mobiles, which is really good. Alright, so I've decided to record a speed paint and it actually went somewhat well, somewhat well. Um, normally I don't tend to do speed paints because I'm afraid of not uh, messing up the sketch or not being able to completely finish it. But yeah, so I was able to actually get a real feel of the using the tablet through this drawing. Um, the sketching part was rough so there wasn't much to it but where, what really shows was in the liner and the coloring. So as you can see over here, the lines are really smooth. I didn't even I, I didn't even need to change the size as I could easily just lightly press and it'll give me thinner lines or thicker based on what I want. And as for coloring, um, in here I'm just using the bucket tool to fill things in, uh, but it really gets to the shading is where I enjoyed using the tablet the most because of how easily I was able to blend the colors, uh, the shadows and the highlights since I was able to press softly and have it not blend as hard as usual and like without having to shift the or adjust the settings as frequently um yeah honestly it was a really good experience okay i did come across a flaw but that was mainly a space issue it was pretty big and i found myself alternating a lot between my keyboard and my and the tablet buttons because i am completely not um, used to them of course I'm not sure whether I'll be using the buttons all the time or my keyboard. I'll have to figure out how I can properly position my tablet where on my desk so I can use it comfortably. Um, because the soft keys, honestly, they're not so very useful. I don't like having to look for each number and then press on it with the pen. I'd much rather have it as actual buttons. So. Either I'm going to change some of the buttons to what I use more, no, use more, or just not use them at all and continue using the keyboard. But otherwise, it was a really nice experience, very smooth, no lag at all, and yeah, I would definitely recommend. Thanks for watching. I really hope this video was helpful and useful into guiding your purchase. And if you've already bought it or you feel and you feel regret or something, maybe this video changed your hope. Of course, if you aren't used to graphics tablets, it might take as long as a week to get used to the feel. The first time I bought my tablet six years ago, I it took me it took me quite a few days to get accustomed to it. Um, so if you don't get the grasp of it right away, don't fret because you will eventually learn how to master it. And it shouldn't take too long. And yeah, uh, if you guys want to subscribe, go ahead. You know, like I update this channel frequently. Um, leave a like, maybe. Comments, and if you want me to try to review anything else. If I honestly, if I ever get my hands on something else, I would probably review it. I like doing these review videos. I've always wanted to do this one. This is literally my first one. Um, let me know if there's anything I should change. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Maybe. Bye.